Ben, Ben, <laughs> don't play with your pots, man. Wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you yeah, started already. <laughs> and welcome back to What Your Cooking. Cooking. Okay, like, I mean, it's been like what, 40 days, maybe? 40 it's been plus a long days? time. We're going crazy. And uh, you have been on for quite a number of episodes mm. right now. And what we're really saying is stay positive, have fun in the kitchen. Yeah. It, it was almost like a <laughs> lion dance yeah, percussion well, set. We we're had. here to have some fun, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. So how have you, how, I mean, how are you holding up? Are you feeling fine at home? And thank you once again for joining us on this episode of What You're Cooking. Remember to like, share and comment. comment. Yeah. And we're going to have our Subway meal coming your way. Uh, and of course, uh, do remember to once again comment right below. We've got a couple of questions that we answered over the last few shows. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rico, Yo. what have you been up to? I've been looking for a haircut. <laughs> I think I'm we are all... growing mullet. <laughs> I, I think all of us are starting to have a mullet. I look like a helmet head yeah. today, you know? That's handy, because yeah. we've got a cyclist yeah. later. Oh, really? Yeah. So I look like I'm wearing the cycling helmet yeah. on the show today. Yeah. But I think what's really yeah. cool is that we are really showing people that besides, you know, being approved to come out for work, mm. half the time really we are at home, working from home, and that is why mm. both of us, now we realise that we got hair. Yeah, this is the only time I get to come out. <laughs> Supermarket to buy the food and come here. Yeah, so, so uh, what is it like, you know, coming into possibly day 40? How's your mm. whole mental state and physical self? Up to date. Uh, it's a little bit like Groundhog Day. Every day starts to feel a little bit the same, but I've got a good routine and I make sure I get a bit of exercise in every day and that really helps me mentally to stay sharp. And, yeah, so so uh, I also have a couple of change that I've set into my life over the past mm. one month. Mm -hmm. I've started exercising. I, I do runs almost every night now. I can maybe see. Maybe about 3.5 to 4 kilometers. Wow. It's getting looser by I the day. Know. I need a new apron probably. <laughs> I might be able to help you with that. Really? Yeah. All right. Let's you see. want it what now? Was... Yeah. I brought a what? special one. <gasps> oh, yeah. Wow. This is the special Singapore Sport Institute apron. This is a big moment to get your first SSI apron, Ben. So now I got yeah. upgraded after more than 10 episodes yeah. with my very own SSI apron. Right. Well done, Ben. Thank you so much. You're welcome, man. I'm going to keep this on with me so okay. that I can pass on this Kiss the Chef apron to someone really, really cool. Awesome. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what yep. are the uh, dishes for this episode. Oh, cannot have a kiwi on a cooking show without cooking lamb. Lamb, oh! Yeah, so today, today we're going to go lamb and we're going to throw some Middle Eastern flavours at it, some dates, some dried apricots, some oh, prunes. Wow. So it's fruity, oh, yeah. it's savoury, yeah, it's really tasty. Yeah, do it with a little bit of couscous. Wow. I've got a nice little bright number to paint with it too. I know you're an artist in the kitchen. So what's the theme then for this set of dishes? Middle Eastern style? Yeah, cool. we could say that. So we're really starting to travel yeah. around the world while yeah. you're staying at home, right? Yeah, and I hear that you like ice cream. I love ice cream. Yeah. But, but I mean, I've cut down on ice cream, but if okay. there's a healthy way to enjoy ice cream, why not? I brought an ice cream recipe you can have for breakfast. Wow. How about that? Fantastic. Right. So if you've been thinking about having something sweet and savory, this episode is for you. Mm. And Enrico, get, uh, good to have you back. Good to I be assume there. you have some preparations to do. I so do, I'm going to have you back in a yes, short thanks. while. Okay. All right, so... <laughs> You know, that's what we like about this show, isn't it? It's always about having fun, something casual. And today, this episode, we really want to talk about something that is uh, really real in life. Giving back to the people around you. You know, after more than 30 days, 40 days at home, uh, besides keeping positivity, have you been nice to the people around you? Right now, in this episode, we're going to invite a student, an undergraduate from NTU, from computer science. This is Lee Ray Shah. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, all right, all right. Yeah. Oh. Wait, okay, distance. <laughs> yeah. Same, 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 right. same distance, yeah. My goodness, you're so tall. Yeah, I guess, I think, like, with Rico around you, I think <laughs> you look like a small little tower. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm petite and bite-sized. Yeah. I'll use the correct word, don't say short. Nah. It's not yeah. really mal, huh? you know I mean? But you know, it's great to see you. And uh, many of the viewers might, you know, have heard about you but never really gotten the chance to see you in person. Now, Rayshun, tell us a little bit about what you study, what you do, and what you're currently experiencing. Alright, so I actually study computer science in mm -hmm. NTU. And then, um, like, I actually also opened a food store in NTU. Wow. In fact, just right below me. So, like, I stay in Hall, mm -hmm. uh, which is the residence of uh, my school. Mm -hmm. And then I actually opened a Bihun store that actually... Oh. 
like we only open for like five hours every day and we cook bihun for everyone and, and during for supper. Yeah. Oh, so this is your bihun store opens in the evenings. Yeah, so because during the day we are studying, right? So oh. at night then we have time to open and That's sell food. Yeah. Very nice, smart entrepreneurial concept. <laughs> right? Like the supper club man. So in school you cook it, in the evening to to cater to the students who are staying in, in school with you. Yeah. And how long have you been in the business? So the school started um, home-based learning. So everyone had, had to have to move move their stuff from hall and actually go back home. Oh, yeah, so, so because your business relies on the students who are staying in the school yeah. dormitories or hostels. And then with, with them going back home is as good as no business. So you yeah. just started basically for about a month and a half and then suddenly with this circumstance, just boom! Everything, everything is on a standstill. But the good thing is, we read about you in, in the papers and Ray Shang has a really big heart. Now, he has been uh, catering free food to, I think, the elderly, am I right? Yep. Uh, are you providing also for any other dynamics of people? So, we actually explored like uh, foreign worker dormitories, but because our food is not exactly halal, while well, we use mm. halal ingredients, um, we actually uh, are looking into different areas, like mm. those uh, special needs people. We are working with many, many charities out there to actually donate our food to. Oh, that's really interesting. So, really, when it comes to a circumstance of you know, adversities, uh, you don't really have to put yourself on hold. The real thing, message that is brought through by you know, a younger generation over here is that we can stay positive, look at a way to you know, give back to society, and this is what exactly Ration is doing right here. Now, cool thing is, with the FME business, it means that you have a little bit of cooking background, right? I guess you can say that. So today I got a nice upgrade because I got my new SSI apron after uh -huh. like more than 10 episodes. Oh. And because you are such a nice chap, I'm going to hand you my apron only for this episode. Whoa. Put it on yourself because I can't help you. <laughs> what a unique and, uh, one. You get to be the good looking chef so that the audience gets to maybe uh, kiss the chef today. Huh? And I yeah. become more professional. Now while I'm getting my, my apron ready, I'm going to get myself all dolled up. I'm going to have Rico right back. And of course, they're going to proceed with recipe number one. Wow, you're so tall. Mate, someone the same height as me. I'm sure we're not the same fantastic. height. Fantastic. I'm used to like looking down like that. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. good to have you on the show, Ray. Nice to meet you, Dr. Yeah. Rico. Um, was loving the, the backstory there. Mm. Um, really, uh, really awesome stuff. Yeah, you, yeah, you're really more of a cook than me. No, no, don't, don't say yeah, that. Yeah, you, I think you've been cooking way longer than me, man. Maybe right. even older than me. What's your speci so specialty dish? Specialty dish is bihun. Ah. Yeah, this very nice rice vermicelli. Okay. And then we steam it in like dark sauce and then we have it served with like fried food. So wow. people in Singapore love it. Yeah, it's yeah. the signature dish. Yep. Beautiful. Okay, well today we're not doing bihun. We'll do oh. something different. Yeah, a little bit of me Middle Eastern, uh, we're going to do nice lamb. Lamb? Get some nice dried fruits through there ah. and serve it with some couscous. Okay. Yeah, which is like Moroccan bihun in a way. Like they have it oh. all the time and it's very, very easy to eat. Very, very quick to cook. I love lamb. Would you give it a go? Yeah. All right. Let's wash our hands. Right. Very important to do that first. So, got to use some soap. Soap them up. First thing, Ray, we've got to prep our lamb, okay? Mm -hmm. um, what we're going to do is, is marinate it very quickly uh, mm -hmm. in a couple of spices. Um, so I've gone with paprika and cinnamon. You can help me here. Um, a couple right. of different ways to marinate. You can put it all in a bowl and you can get your hands in there and rub it. And I like to be really kinesthetic with my cooking and get my hands on it. But if you don't want to get your hands mucky, you can just put your meat in a plastic bag. Bit of oil in there, spices in there, seal it up, and then you just kind of massage it. I maybe, think so maybe we, you, what way you want to go? Having the feel of the meat. You will are, be the best, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do it that way then. All right, so I'm going to um, give you a teaspoon. All right. If you put in there for me a splash of olive oil. Splash? Yeah. Very precise. One splash. One splash, yes. all right. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Good. Splash that. And right. then um, let's go half a teaspoon of paprika. Yep. So half a teaspoon of that. Oh, I just got a nice whiff of that cinnamon too. Mm. Beautiful. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's add that this one too. Two? Yeah. All right. Now if you are a ginger fan and you like to rev it up a little bit, you could add ginger too. Um, mm -hmm. No problem. Beautiful. All right. Okay. okay. Now I've got these nice lamb pieces here, around mm -hmm. um, 400 grams of lamb. So we just cut this lamb down a little bit to smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. um, it helps it go around so you can feed many people on a little bit of meat because lamb's not cheap yeah. um, in Singapore, eh? 
uh, and it cooks a little bit quicker as well. Okay. So I'm going to pass you these in a minute, Ray. Okay. And you're just going to pop those for me. Into the bowl? Yeah, put All it right. into the bowl and just get them um, rolling in those beautiful flavors. Okay. The oil will just start coating the meat. The spices yeah. will get on there. I love this feeling. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I could see you being a baker as well. Is it? I could see you rolling out some nice bread though at some point. Ha. Ah. Yeah. All right. Well, you can smell it already, eh? Yeah. I'm actually yeah. really tempted to eat yeah, it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't no? advise that. Oh, okay. No. So once you're happy with that, push that to the side. Okay. I'm going to put some water in the jug and the kettle and just get the kettle boiling. Mm-hmm. And what we're going, you want to wash your hands? Yeah, I'll wash my hands right? first. Yeah. All, All right. right. Good, Ray. Can you just sprinkle a bit of salt into that lamb for me as well? A little salt. Yeah. Is this some special salt we're looking at? That's um, pink that's, salt. Um, Himalayan rock salt. Ah, okay. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, pink, pink salt. You just grind it. All right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's so different. You're learning on this job, eh? Yeah, they come in like crystals. Yeah, it's and... good. Okay. Interesting. All right. This is a couscous. Couscous. Have okay. you seen it before? Yeah, it's like a type of green, right? It is. Actually, it's made from durum wheat, the same wheat that they make, um, that the Italians make pasta from. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it looks like not much like this. It's, it's all small and well, a little grainy. Span yeah. and it's big. The this is like great student food, you know, because you don't actually have to cook it. Oh. We're just going to add boiling water to it and just let it sit. Mm. We're going to add one simple thing to flavor it up and that's it. And then we just car park it until our meat is cooked. Okay. Pretty easy, eh? Sounds easy, man. All right. So, Ray, the, the job for you is to go half a cup of that. Half a cup? Yep. Into that uh, small pan. To the small pan. Mm hmm. All right. All right. And lemons. Yeah, I just washed this lemon, mm -hmm. and we're going to add that. Um, we're going to give that a little squeeze. Whoa! All right, All right. Just, yeah, we can just squeeze that in there, and then I'm just going to drop it in. Mm -hmm. we'll give that one a little squeeze. I'm going to drop that in. So you're going to cook the lemons too? That's our flavour. Ah, oh. pretty easy, eh? Oh, looks easy, man. I can yeah. do this back in school. Yeah, you can. What we're going to do now, Ray, is um, add water to the couscous. Just this, like rice? Yeah, exactly the same okay. ratios, right? So we go half a cup of couscous mm -hmm. to uh, a full cup of hot water. Okay. Yeah, okay, which we've got a half cup measure here. Mm -hmm. So if you can fill that up twice with hot water for me from the kettle. All right, I'll go get it. Into the pan. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we just let that soak. All right. So it doesn't need cooking. It just needs to sit and just absorb all that water. Um, and it will just steam away with the lemon. Beautiful. I got one cup here. Yeah, oh, one cup. Half a cup. Yep. You've got um, a half cup measure. Do that again. Ooh. Yeah, nice. All right. You got it. Put back the kettle. Now you can play a little game and you mm -hmm. can just get the, the lemon and just kind of move it around a little bit. Just to loosen everything up. Nice. All right. Now you can put the lid on. Okay, so just like that, yep. it's cooked? Yep, that'll sit there for about 5-10 minutes ah. while we cook the lamb. Right? Okay. Yeah, and then we just serve that at the end. How easy is that? It's so simple, it's, it's like even easier than instant noodles. It's a dream. Yeah. Alright, let's turn some heat on the big pan for me. Alright. Thanks Ray. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, a little splash of olive oil in the pan. Olive oil. Yeah. A good splash. Okay. Alright. Okay, let's put the lamb in the frying pan. All right, I can already right? hear it sizzling. Yeah. yeah, should be a good bit of heat there now. Oh. Beautiful. Make sure it all gets in the pan. Mm -hmm. Spread it all out. What I'm going to do is just get a um, one of our beautiful uh, brinjal here. Brinjal? Yeah, purple Some people eggplant. call it eggplants. Yeah, yeah. Um, they obviously come black as well. I love the local eggplant though. Um, there's no... Big seeds in here, mm -hmm. just beautiful, sweet, very easy to eat, very easy to cook. All I need to do is just put this in the microwave for five minutes, and right? It's and then we're going to put that in the dish at the end. Ah. So easy. Okay, I'll go wash my hands first. Okay. So 
What, what, what is this lamb dish actually called? Like, what's the name of this dish? Uh, this is called a lamb tagine. Tagine? How, tagine. how do you spell that? Uh, T-A-G-I-N-E. T-A-G-I-N-E. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so a tagine is actually a, a nice big, big uh, clay pot from the Middle East. Uh -huh. Actually, it's a young man's dish. So it's like my kind yeah, of dish? Yeah, it's like your, it could be your new signature oh. dish. Okay, while the lamb's cooking, Ray, we're going to um, cut up some dried fruit. Okay. So I have some, uh, some beautiful medjool dates. Very juicy. There's a stone in there, though, so I'll help you take those out. Okay. Uh, so three of those, and then we have some dried apricots. Apricots, okay. Four dried apricots and five prunes. Prunes. Oh, yeah. I love prunes. Yeah. Those, do you know what, um, what fruit a prune is made from or comes from? A grape? No. Uh, something a little bit bigger? Um, I have no idea. A plum. A plum. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's like a... So a dried plum becomes a prune. Oh, interesting, yeah. interesting. And a dried grape becomes a raisin. Oh. Yeah. Wow, it looks so good. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it smells so yeah. good too. Okay, we'll get the stone out of here. Oh, what are those? Yeah, there's a little stone in the middle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whoa, that noise rings a bell. The eggplants are done. <laughs> the eggplants done. All right. All right, let's get this, uh, let's get this fruit diced up. Okay. This dish moves along now, so um, cooks quite quickly. I'm going to be quite rustic style with this. All right. Do I throw mine in too? Yes, please. All right. Sprinkle them all over yeah. the place. And then the apricots. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, I like, I like it how you do that from a height, yeah. Ray. Get some color into it. Nice. It All right. smells really good. We got a little more veggie. Okay. okay. Capsicum. Yeah. Yeah, you have the you have the yellow mm. one. I have the red one. You do as I do. Okay. So take the take the knife, cut the end off. Okay. The right. End off. And you've missed the seeds. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you've just got some nice chambers, just to slice down. So you cut them slice around down the seeds. around the seeds. We don't want the seeds going into the dish. And this dish starts looking really colorful, really fast in the pan. Remember, mm. colors straight in the pan. So now your immune system's starting to get excited, <laughs> right? Because we're putting some vitamin C in the dish. Okay. And some antioxidants as well. Some yellows. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have to stir it around? Woo, it's hot. Play hot Whoa. potato. All right, uh, next thing. Add some um, some sliced almonds. Almonds? Yeah, a couple of good pinches of those. We're going to add a little bit of garlic. garlic as well. Okay. Just very rough. Okay, we can just uh, pop that into the pan as well. Okay. Good, Ray. Yeah, it smells okay. so good. Put it down, Ray. <laughs> okay, squeeze that in there, Ray. Just a little squeeze. Imagine three tablespoons. Imagine. Yeah. Good, I can see All you right. visualizing it. So what is this? This is just tomato, tomato paste. paste. Okay. Yeah, tomato puree. All right, it needs a bit of moisture now. So we add some water. It needs a bit of moisture, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of water. Yep. Right, Ray, just give it a very gentle stir. Okay. And just mix all that tomato paste in for me. Okay. All right, and then if we can just turn the heat down a little. So we're letting the sauce simmer into the food? Yeah, you got it. Okay. Good, Ray. And right. if you put the lid on for me, please. Okay. And that will just keep the heat in. Good. And All it's right. down on about a half, half power. Yeah, nice. just about there. Okay. This is our cooked eggplant. Mm -hmm. Five minutes in the microwave and it's done. Okay. All right. So all we're going to do is just top it and tail it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to cut it down the middle. It's quite hot. Now it's gone all soft in the middle, see? Mm-hmm. Looks really right. hot. Yeah, it's quite hot. <laughs> and, and what I love about eggplant, we've basically created a flavor sponge now. Uh -huh. Okay, so when we put this in the dish, we're going to put um, spongy side down mm -hmm. and it's going to it's going to suck up all those beautiful Juice. flavors and it's going to be unreal. Just press those down there. So purple side up and sponge you, in. You got it. Okay. Purple side up, spongy side down. Okay. You put the lid on again, okay. right? Yep, 
So I'm um, expecting some tasty eggplants after this. Yeah, and now we just got to let, let that simmer down mm -hmm. until we're happy. Yep. Um, let's have a look at the couscous. How's that looking? Oh yeah. Totally forgot. Oh. Look at that. It looks, it looks like the water disappeared. Yeah, it's absorbed. It's oh. actually ready to eat now. It looks amazing. Not bad, eh? Where's so what we can do, fluff it up a little bit, right? Um, so that that's nice. So that that's happy as you like. So we can put the lid back on, mm. and just let it to rest. All right, that's ready to go. Let's plate that up. Okay. Uh, and you can enjoy that with Ben a little bit later on. How does that sound? Right, I'm so hungry. Okay. I'm going to get... Wow. It smells really, really good. Yeah, I, I think you're so right about the eggplant soaking eh? everything up. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to... Um, I made a little bit of beetroot hummus last night. So we're going to put a little bit of beetroot hummus for this as well, which is very Moroccan too. Okay. Another Moroccan staple. Um, I'm going to just cut up a little bit of... Um, Coriander. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to go herbs. Uh, herbs today. Okay. I'm going to um, pop a little bit of uh, this on the plate. Okay. So, do we serve the lemon too? No, we not. So, there's our there's our hummus. Okay. Uh, there's our couscous. Couscous. Hummus. So, couscous and hummus do they come together very often? Uh, couscous and hummus. Yeah, I mean it's all Middle Eastern Moroccan stuff. Okay. Yep, and uh, we're just going to... Ben, ben thinks he's a bit of an artist, right, mm. in the kitchen, and he likes a bit of colour, so I thought we'd um, we'd make like a little bit of a palette for him. Mm. Okay, let's get this served up. That's a huge portion. Yeah, isn't it nice? Yep. So there you are, look at that. We're just going to pop that on there. So do we serve the gravy of the Yeah. It makes a it? beautiful sauce. Ah. Yeah. Let's get one of our brinjals on. Okay. Alright, like that. Another pepper. A little bit of colour. Looks gorgeous, man. A little bit of sauce. I'm gonna just go a little bit of olive oil to finish. Okay. Alright. There we go. Okay. So here we go, Ray. A little bit of garnish on the top. Okay. A little bit of freshly chopped coriander. Mm -hmm. And that is just looking gorgeous, isn't it? Right. Isn't that nice? Greens, like reds, All yellows, the colours of the pinks. rainbows all over oh, this. It's just fantastic. So I'm going to leave you here to enjoy this with Ben. Okay. Uh, and then we've got a surprise MasterChef ice cream challenge ice. for you and Ben. Ray, right. how does that sound? Sounds so all good. Right. Tune in. Stay with us. See you after the break.
and welcome back to Whatcha Cooking! Wow. Very natural, huh? No wonder he's wearing my apron today, huh? Looks like you got an upgrade, huh? I've got upgraded oh. to SSI level after more than 10 episodes, but I still can't play it properly, lah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I had heard earlier on when I was returning back after dolling myself, huh, so you can see my hair is glossier, lah. Huh? Uh, Alright, that this dish that you've cooked on the first recipe is for young men like me. Huh? I cooked it all by myself, man. Oh, really, man? Dr. Yeah. Rico just no, walked <laughs> <laughs> So, So, what is the... Okay, this is the probably the most colourful dish we have seen in all episodes. I really like the colour and everything. So, uh, what is the name of this dish? The gin... The, 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 Boss, uh, what is the name of the dish? Yeah, you can tajin. Huh? Tajin. Oh. Tajin. Oh. Tajin. Oh. Tajin. 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 Oh, tajin. Yeah. Tajin. So, um, what, what do we have inside here? We got, I can see mutton, I can see brinjal, eggplant, pepper. Couscous. Couscous, all right. Couscous. Middle Eastern people like to eat couscous. Yeah. To replace uh, rice. And uh, Rico, is a healthier choice, right? In terms of uh, carbo, when it comes to yeah, couscous. Yeah, it's pretty slow release. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. So, so for those of you who want to, you know, keep a good diet, couscous is good. And the pink colour one is? This one is, this one is it? This one is hummus. Oh, oh, hummus. 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 Oh, hummus. Hummus. <laughs> hummus. So I'm going to dive in and try. You also, come let's split up a little bit. I'm going uh, straight for the lamb. Okay, I'm going for lamb and a little bit of couscous. Wow. Mmm. So nice. Wow. Surprisingly. Like there's this mm, sweetness. Mm. There's this savoury. It's sweet, it's savoury, it's, it's moist. I think the most interesting thing is that it's so moist. So when you bite the meat, you don't get that half, uh, you know, hard to bite texture. You know, sometimes when you overcook lamb, mm. it's that. Mm. So, Rizal, there's a note here right, from your girlfriend. Ah. Hey. Oh, wow, it looks like a Dr. MC at the handwriting and like that. What, the handwriting from this oh, person? Looks like Jalat, ingredients, ah. Jalat? Jalat. What does that mean? Jalat means very bad. Ah. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Ayyoh. Terrible, in other words. Also, this is, this is your recipe for the day. This is your recipe for the day. I oh, see so, this so is many our... frozen stuff. Are we like making some ice cream or something? This is a strawberry lemonade breakfast ice cream. It's so healthy you can eat it for breakfast. Oh, Whoa. wow. Strawberry breakfast. Ice cream. Yeah. Every episode we actually have a challenge and we go here on to prepare a secret recipe or a surprise recipe. Today it's ice cream, I think. So okay. I assume we're gonna use everything over here. Condiments, fruits, and we're gonna start blending. Okay, so um our first task is frozen banana. Okay, this one so, has to be. Right. I already froze it for you. I'm going okay. to grab uh additional fork and spoon. Oh, rock hard banana. Okay. <laughs> so if you've got bananas uh, ripening at home, just uh -huh. peel it, put it in a plastic bag. Put freezer. it in the freezer. Beautiful. So you can see that it's already frozen because... Yeah, uh, just one, two. Up to you, I think. Uh, it says you. one. Yeah. I put. I, I want a little bit more because I want my ice cream to maybe possibly right, be a bit you, thicker. One more, That's oh, it. This one is a very kiasu. Gra <laughs> grab a good handful of frozen yeah. strawberries now. Right, strawberries. Strawberries are a good form of antioxidants, right? Really, really mm. good. Beautiful red. Okay, so half, half a lemon squeeze juice. juice. Uh, so Where I got juice? Honey... I see couscous, I don't see juice. The Ray, line, Ray, huh? go long, Ray. Got oh, it. Wait, wow, nice catch, huh? <laughs> Let's get, we need half of this, right? Okay, so we need to cut it into half. All right. Okay. All right, so I, I need half, half to do you. there. So, one meter apart. Just think squeeze we half. Oh, half a lemon means the whole oh, thing. Oh, this lemon's strong, huh? Oh, yeah, I forgot to teach you one thing. Usually, before that, you roll the fruit a little bit. Really, so man? Yeah, yeah, so that it gets a bit softer, huh? Right. Uh, this was right. caught yeah, by. Okay, okay. See? See? Wow. <laughs> yes, and then uh -huh. after that, we have uh, one tablespoon of yogurt. Yoga. Tablespoon. Okay, you can do the yogurt, I'll do my honey first because okay. we're still competing, la, so we are very friendly, actually. Huh? Yeah. You are. Very cooperative. All right. One tablespoon. Do one teaspoon. I think a big one. I like honey, so I'm gonna put a little bit more. What, watch the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love yogurt. La. I add a bit more. La. Okay, and then okay. so again, it is up to our. I mean, I mean, though that the, there's instruction, but we don't have to follow exactly because I got my style. Rishan got his style. Most yeah. importantly, we will see if Rico likes either one of the style. So we have blend and what's decot. D, D. What's D what? D what is to to tattoo, uh. What's, what's the last one? I think it says... Decorate! Decorate! <laughs> <laughs> it's all on the real decorate! 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 Wow. So we have the blender. 
get some lemon off my fingers. Okay, I'm gonna start my version first because Rachel Wang looks like he's gonna just make my <laughs> mind super sweet. You know, I'm starting to be more healthy. I'm eh? just gonna add more strawberries into. Okay, so I'm gonna add the banana. Make it a little more sour. Okay, I'm gonna add some my honey steak inside. So I'm gonna just because it's got frozen. Uh huh. I'm gonna just mix it in. I'm gonna start my ice cream version first. Place the blend in. We're rinsing with water. Looks like we don't have to add water inside, is it? Yeah. No need. Oh. I think it's just by because of the. Whoa! Whoa. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm done with my ice cream. Blender. That looks really good, actually. Look at that. Wow. wow. It looks like a actually it looks like a sob sorbet. Sorbet. Yeah. Sorbet. Sure sorbet. Okay, I'm gonna just scoop my ice cream out. Yeah. And then you can have a quick rinse of the cup. Okay. So that you can blend yours, and then I'll start decorating first. Actually, right, you know all the. Zicha chef, right? They always like to make the. They don't wash the wok properly because the, the leftover will always work. stack over. Okay, yeah. like you can stack over. Don't worry, it's so clean. Anyway. I guess I'll just edit straight in. To be fair, then when I, if, even if you win, I'm contributing to it, lah. I guess you can say that, lah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put the blending base for you, uh, and then I'm going to just try to make my ice cream cool. look a little bit nicer by rounding it up. So I'm gonna dive into my condiments. You can go okay. over. Okay, I'll go and blend so that my. I can come into your position. Now remember, we eat with our eyes. Yes. So, so this is where the decoration comes in. And this is the part that I'm trying to think like Isha and Nicholas and you know, all the trans people that came and they had done so well in the decoration part, right? Wow. Um, wow. I'm so I'm going to uh, keep my distance from you and I'm going to, you know, decorate it a little bit. Are you curious, you know, while we are decorating, right? How, how? How do you actually come about with your, your campaign of, you know, donating food uh, okay. or cooking bihun for the, the elders and the, the, the people who are in need at this stage for the circuit breaker? Okay, so I think to understand first, right, what happened was that, I like, remember, we, we, our store couldn't open. Yeah. So, um, like, I was, I was staying at home together with my whole team and we were like, wow, it's so boring and there's, there's like nothing to do, you know? Yes. And then that's when we suddenly think about what can we do, like, right now, since we have the skills to cook bihun, right? Might as well put it to good use. So I was thinking, oh, what can I do, what can I do? And then I, I saw like some Facebook pages, they were saying like, oh, like the foreign workers, they don't have like, like proper food, like they don't have enough food, they need people to donate. And that's when I was, I was thinking, oh, well, actually there's a lot of people affected by this COVID-19 period. Mm. So as students, right, you don't really feel the impact. Oh, you feel good, right. school cancelled, wow, oh, everything cancelled. <laughs> but then you think about those people actually working, right? Those people, like even my neighbours, like you see, the store next to me, right? They can't open because there's no one to sell. Yes, yes. So they, they are effectively on no pay leave. Correct. So that's when we thought, wow, we can do something about this. And then we started like a crowdfunding campaign. Mm -hmm. And then so we actually like asked people, hey, if you donate money, like we will actually try and feed as many people as we can. Mm. So um, we started straight away. Like even before our first send came in, we started. We started with one charity. We started with Food Bank. And mm -hmm. now we are feeding more than seven charities, including like Loving Hearts, Wheeling Hearts, uh, even People's Association, and like many, many charities wow. out there. One so, minute! Um, okay, I'm just okay. curious as to how many deliveries have you already completed so far? Okay, so as of today, right, we have actually already um, done like um, 30,000 meals actually. 30,000? More than 30,000 meals. Wow, that over 30, yeah. that's about 1,000 meal or 800 meals a day. Eh? Yeah, so we actually slowly, slowly scale up. So in the beginning, we started with like 200 and right now we're at 2,000. So all our food packers are all volunteers, but we also have, um, we also hired chefs that actually lost their jobs during this COVID-19 period. Wow, yeah. so you're so really forward looking. Because you're wondering 2,000 packets, how like, one person can cook so yeah, many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Impossible, right? Yeah. yeah, so we worked with a lot of kitchens out there and then, so some of these kitchens, their, their, chefs, are, their chefs are actually on no pay leave, so we told them, hey, come back, we can, we can hire you and then you can cook bihun for us. Fantastic. At the same time, you're also helping the society. And I'm really proud that, you know, there are so many people, I think you'll be also equally surprised that there are so many Singaporeans who actually reached out to you yeah. and there are so many, you know, uh, brands and people out there from the corporates that are actually assisting you with mm -hmm. the food supplies and that's why this is totally possible. Yeah. And because of that, while we are talking, I'm done. Yeah, one last thing I forgot to add, a drizzle of honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, his honey is not a drizzle. Oh. This is a thunderstorm of honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have mine ready. I think mine looks nice but when I look at Rachel's, I suddenly get a little bit yeah. Worried and susceptible. Let's, let's do a comparison. It's Why like, is your bowl so big? Like yours looks like half portion. Eh? <laughs> if I go to a dessert shop, eh, they give me like this. Eh? Wow, I think I'll return it. Eh. No, I'll, I'll never just, come back again. I will just tell them, like what we could say, we are taking care of the size of your t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> so, 
you know, now that we are done with our frozen-based breakfast ice cream, um, I'm going to just take the chance to also give you the opportunity to shout out to the audience and viewers over here. What do we uh -huh. have to say to the people who are still in the circuit breaker with us? I think for everyone, just uh, hang in there. It's going to end really soon. Mm. Uh, and for those people who actually are in need or actually really need help, don't, don't be afraid to reach out because like, there, there are a lot of people out there that, that, will, that, are, that are willing to help you out. Like I myself, I'm, I'm really, really amazed that like, how people can actually reach out, can actually reach out and, and, and uh, okay. you know, I, extend that helping yeah, hand. Extend right? that helping hand. And people don't just, it's not just donating money. Eh. Correct. People like, donate their time. Like, they come wake up as early as 3 a.m. in the mm. morning to come here and help us pack our food. Correct. And then we have people that also donate ingredients, like people try to help out with expertise, like, like helping us out. Like we have people that donate masks. Like, so now every meal box right, that we sell comes, with, the comes with a mask. Wow. Yeah. So we have given out more than 25,000 masks. And out of these 25,000 masks, right, like more than 90% of it is actually donated from the public. So it's really what we call paid forward. Yeah. Uh, so we know what we are we're celebrating here, I think, as Singaporeans, is that as a nation, we are showcasing that. Uh, you know, side of us that's so united mm -hmm. and of course we are showing that part that is so positive who knows that a computer science undergraduate could have thought of opening a bihun store run into a situation of adversity extend his reach and boom create that kind of outreach that we might not have thought about so yeah. that's amazing so sit back relax enjoy the program that's what what your cooking is about cooking simple easy to prep food at home while setting your thoughts in play we're teaching very well said, very well yeah. said. So I know that you have something on this afternoon. So before I yeah. bring Rico back, he's going to taste and judge which one is better with our results out next, uh, next week. So Rayshon, thank you once again. Let's thank have an so elbow much. bump for today. And I'll all catch right. you. I will tell you the results after the show, all right? So <sighs> say bye to everybody. All right. See, See you guys.
Yeah, jump yeah! <laughs> and you haven't reached the finishing line, yeah? We're going crazy. I know, right? So you must be wondering what we are doing, and basically we are doing or imitating track cycling. And this has everything to do with our special guest coming online to join us on What You're Cooking this episode. Now, this round, we have Singapore's renowned track cyclist, Kelvin Sim, to join us. Hey, Kelvin! Yo, yo, yo. Hello, yo, everyone. Yo. Thanks for having hey, me. Hey, Rico, tell me a little bit about your relationship with Kelvin. Uh, have you all been working together over the past few oh, yeah. seasons? Oh, yeah. Kelvin was one of the first um, athletes that I worked with when I arrived in Singapore four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I inherited the sport of cycling, and I was quite excited about that because I've done some triathlon in the past. Wow. Uh, but this guy was something else. Um, he, he came in and... Um, well, I tell you, a nutrition student, exemplary. Just really? absorbed all the facts and the figures, and we put it all together. And wow. yeah, he's very disciplined with his eating. Discipline and technical gentleman. Yeah, yeah. and um, and won a gold medal. I think, was it Singapore's first gold medal on the track at SEA Games, Kelvin? Uh, no, it's uh, the first gold medal in 22 years. Wow. The first one in a long time, 22 years. Talking yeah. about yeah. that, you know, Kelvin, maybe you can take the chance to introduce yourself to our viewers out there. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what you do, who you are, and some of the accolades that are touching on to 2017 also, yeah? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Kelvin Sim. I'm a Team Singapore cyclist. I specialize uh, in the track, uh, in the velodrome. Yeah, my main uh, pet event is the Omnium, which I... Hope in uh, 2022 Asian Games that I can uh, get a podium. Yeah. So uh, my uh, my events are made quite short. So basically, I rain, I uh, train about 20, 25 to 30 hours per week. Wow. Yeah. That's 25 to 30 hours is about four hours a day. There about yeah. three and a half to four hours per day, right? No, you know, Kelvin, you, you are actually on a very outdoor sport based uh, platform, right? Mm. And with the you know circuit breaker and with the measures that are in place, has it uh, you know uh, affected your training regime? And uh, you know what is your current lifestyle? For me, I I scaled back. Um, I, I discussed with my coach and I scaled back a lot of uh, of my training, mainly in volume, but I still keep the intensity, which I uh, haven't been focusing for quite a long time because uh, uh, this phase is more about uh, the previous phase of training was base training. Now mm -hmm. the current phase should be more on intensity. So to keep myself uh, mentally fresh as well, uh, I included some uh, like um, uh, virtual workouts which wow. I can do with my friends online so on a virtual platform called Swift. So you have digitalization Sorry? processes implemented into your training regime, just like how yep. working from businesses have you know, gone on to the digital platform for meetings. You have trainings in virtual style. Do you have any sample pictures? I'm really curious. I haven't seen it. Yeah, have you seen before? Sure. Hmm. Really? That's pretty cool. Can you share with us some insights sure. of how your virtual training world looks like? So this oh, is like wow. a snaps of like this a cartoon character I, I am. Yeah. Oh, the one that looks like Rico so, is you. No! <laughs> Yeah, so in That's the real world, I can't grow a beard, you know, on the virtual world, I will grow a beard. Ah, Just like Dr. Wow. Rico. Also, you actually get a chance to race with people from a, around the globe. Yeah, basically and, and, and anywhere, how, how as long as they log on to this platform. Oh, and, and do you actually use physical equipment? You know, like, do you still use your bicycle or do you just use your hands and play like a mobile phone game, you know? Yeah, because... Um, my bike is very specific to me. Uh, I make sure that um, in order not to get injured or cause any issues, I actually use my own bike mounted on a bike trainer that allows me to um, uh, turn my bike into a stationary bike. Oh, do you have like a picture this. for that one? Just to see how it looks like? I'm really curious. Yeah. Know. So there's a bike tray that you mount your bike on. So that's trainer, how yeah, train. yeah, so there's a physical bike. They're still using their actual training bike, but uh, it doesn't travel anymore, right? Oh, so actually our local, you know, uh, sports scenes are very well supported so that they actually can carry on training in as real time as possible, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's a beautiful bike, a Pinarello. Amazing. And you got a little fan set up there, Calvin. 
Yeah. Uh, is, that, is that for wind resistance? My, no, mainly just to not be dehydrated. I find that uh, it's a lot easier to get dehydrated uh, when I'm indoors. Oh, because you don't really feel the full impact, right? Because you are in a comfort zone. I, I thought it's the fan down there and then you start shaking. It's, it's for the evaporative um, heat loss, isn't it? To cool you down. So you get that stylish wind blow like the MTVs, you know? Just to blow it in the wind. Yeah, So, but thanks again for sharing, Kelvin. Let's bring you back uh, and uh, take a good look on your beautiful face. And uh, I want to ask you a few questions. <laughs> do you actually cook at home? Curious. Yes, I do. Actually, uh, because I'm usually based overseas, so usually I do a lot, of, quite a lot of cooking myself. Ah, so you know, earlier on, Rico, you have worked with Kelvin. What mm. are some of the regimes or some of the dietary recommendations mm. you have, you know, uh, given him before as mm. a cyclist? What, what are some of the recommendations? Yeah, I mean, Kelvin, as you're sensing, does huge hours on the road. Some training days, six, eight hours, right? So that mm. takes a lot of fuel, a lot of calories, um, just a lot of wholesome food, um, but a lot of pasta. A lot of rice, a lot of carbohydrate. These guys burn carbs like you wouldn't believe. Oh, wow. Yeah. So cycling actually burns a lot more carbo yeah, that's the compared primary. to running? That's the primary. Um, it depends how fast you run, but um, you know, it's hard to run eight hours every day. Correct. Isn't it? Cycling, less impact, but, um, but real long endurance stuff. Mm, so for yeah. you hobbyists out there, even if you're not a competitive uh, cyclist, if you go on your you know, cycling trips and all that, you yeah. know, while the CB is still on, of course, stay safe, ride alone. Mm. Uh, these are some of the dietary information that you can carry through with your daily lives. Yeah, and you know, even if you look at the Tour de France, I mean, they're eating a lot of colours, a lot mm. of uh, fruits, a lot of vegetables, a lot of antioxidants, recovery. This guy here is smashing his body every day. You gotta eat well to recover. Mm, agree. So Kelvin, yeah. we're going to, you know, this is the first time you're coming on to our program. And this is where we also, you know, you get to cycle with people from overseas. Now you get to cook with people in Singapore. So we're gonna teach you <laughs> a, a new dish that you can uh, DIY at home that is great for, you know, uh, an addition to your, your main course. Yeah. So Rico, tell us a little bit about what you're going to prepare for this round. Well, when we prepare um, Kelvin for competition, we mm. get him to take beetroot, right? Because beetroot contains um, something called nitrate, which oh. uh, expands your blood vessels, helps enhance oxygen circulation around the body, helps mm. the muscle work harder for longer. Ah. Um, beetroot is not a traditional um, part of the Asian cuisine. A lot of people struggle with the taste mm. of it. Um, this is a really nice way to... Um, to get beetroot blend into your in. body. Yeah, blend it in. You like that lamb dish. It was very colourful, wasn't Correct. it? Correct. Yeah, um, and the, the bright pink hummus. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Oh, also, the bright pink hummus that was in the tagine. Yes. Is what we're going to prepare. Had a whole now. beetroot in it. Wow. Yeah, so good for you. Um, so I thought I'd show you how to make it. All right, so um, Gavin, are you a fan of beetroot? Do you have it a lot? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I always uh, uh, have it. Uh, since uh, studies have shown that it improves uh, oxygen uptake and also is good for you as well. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's about time. I just need to take more so I get more oxygen to the brain too. So. <laughs> yeah, this is really good. It's great for, um, for anyone with high blood pressure as well. It's mm. great for lowering blood pressure. Great. Yeah, in a nice, uh, gentle, healthy way. And the best of all, we don't have to cook it. This is, this is a no-cook oh. thing. We're just going to blend it all together. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so yeah. it's everything, no fire, no heat. Let's go. Yeah, let's do it, eh? All Very right. fast. The traditional base for a hummus is chickpeas. Okay. Okay. We are in uh, Circuit Breaker. I, w I ran around Singapore trying to find a can of chickpeas. I eventually found one mm -hmm. on my third go, I think it was. Wow. Right? But um, I thought, I need, a, I need a substitute when I can't find chickpeas. Mm. So I actually um, soaked and cooked some soybeans. Oh, soybeans can be Which is a maybe a little more that. traditional mm. um, in Singapore, right? So I think we could make it with soybeans today instead. Mm. Bump the protein up. Good. So we want half a cup of soybeans. So here's a half cup measure. Okay. Right, so see if you can measure. Pour it into yeah. half the cup. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I got some bits chopped in. It's okay. That's probably like one, one and one fifth. <laughs> Run away. Hey, Dr. Beans. Rico. This? Yeah. About there. Do you think uh, this is a good uh, low carb option? Um. Chickpeas have a nice gentle carbohydrate. Soybeans don't have as much, so we're probably lowering the carbohydrate a little bit from a traditional hummus here. 
Mm. Yeah, there's a little bit of carbohydrate yeah. and beetroot so, as well. So what I think is that for you who is uh, high in intensity, yeah. you can use the chickpeas because you need the carbo. Yeah. For those of you who are hobbyists out there, you don't burn as much, you might consider the soybean yeah. as the alternative. Yeah. Alright, so soybeans yeah. as well. alternative. We've got a few left over. Mm -hmm. Shall we shall we use the whole lot? Can we? I'm yeah, sure you I can. think so. Yeah. Let, uh, let's dump the whole lot in there. That's about a cup. Alright, All right, so we have a cup full a of cup, soybean. A cup of soybeans. All right, so we're yeah. gonna prep the beetroot. I'm gonna get some runaway chickpea. Yeah. Oh no, this is soybeans away. This is a really big beetroot. It's right. already cooked for us. Yeah, oh, it's so a pre-cooked it version. It's pre-cooked. It comes in a little vacuum-packed plastic bag. Super easy to eat. We'll just pop that in there as well. How many pieces? Um, as many as you like. <laughs> yeah, generally like one cup of um, chickpeas or one cup of soybean. Um, and just like an average size beetroot. This one was really big, so I've just um, made it a little bit smaller. So we have about half of it inside. So can you see this, uh, yeah. Gavin? So it's, it's a little yeah. bit smaller than our fist. Oh, yeah. Very simple. Okay. Uh, we want um, a tablespoon of Greek yogurt. Put in this. Yeah. No. Just to, Does it give just you to a make it a little softer. A bit of moisture. Yeah. Bit. And we're gonna um, we're gonna add a little bit of lemon as well, because that just. Um, <laughs> cuts through the flavour and yeah, it just really works. A lot of people like to start their day with a hot lemon juice. Yeah. They feel it's very cleansing. I mean, it's very good for you. Like, There's a lot of vitamin C in lemon, actually. Mm. Is that all? Uh, we're going to add a little bit of salt. Ah, so for flavouring. Yeah. So again, depending on your own preference. You know, uh, Kelvin, are you a heavy taste person or you, do you like your food a little bit more bland? Or blunt? Uh, I like yeah, I like, uh, I like it, uh, tasting it more salty, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. and me the same, lah. <laughs> yeah. I think he loses a little more sweat than you, though. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of olive oil. <laughs> Good drizzle. All right. Hummus is traditionally Rico. Quite, quite oily. Yeah. And Do you think um, actually the the different kinds of beetroot will actually uh, taste different? Like the you know um, what we have locally is the Vietnamese kind, and yeah. the Australian kind. Uh, the Vietnamese kind would taste more earthy compared to the Australian kind. Um, this and this beetroot is from France, actually, so that probably tastes different. Again, it's quite sweet tasting this one. Mm. Um, and depending on uh, it depends on the soil that it's growing in, doesn't it? Really influences the flavour and also that nitrate content as well changes. So, which um, country's beetroot do you like the best? Mm. New Zealand beetroot, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, but, but really, just to be I mean, politically yeah. correct, yeah. <laughs> you see that the yeah. whole mixture is done. So what yeah. do we do now? We just blend it up now. So I do the blending. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be right. All right. Good job. All right. Oh, well, it, it looks look, nice and thick. It looks almost like the ice cream that we just doesn't made. it? Short you, while ago, right? You, no one would know. <laughs> this is the final recipe for today, which is the beetroot hummus. And I think it will rest quite comfortably, especially for the little ones uh, uh, at home, because it's, it's so nicely subtle. And it's like a dip for the kids out there that they will probably be more adventurous when it comes to tasting beetroot. You, I can see you licking uh, no, no, licking his lips. <laughs> Hey, it's, nice, like, it's a nice colour. It's come out really uh, pink, hasn't it? Yeah! yeah. Can, we, can yeah. you see this? This is how it looks yeah, like. Yeah, it a looks nice awesome. It's preservative-free, isn't it, Kelvin? And yeah. hummus actually is quite expensive to buy um, off the shelf here. Oh, yes, yes, So, it is. so cheap to make it yourself. So easy to make yourself. Okay, and, you, and so you could have that with, um, with uh, meat, with our lamb tagine. Right. With um, vegetable crudettes, with raw capsicum or raw peppers, raw carrot sticks. Oh, so it could be with your salad, yeah. it could be with your Beautiful meat. Beautiful on a salad and a nourish bowl. How about Kelvin, what's your preference? Do, would you think that you would like this hummus dip to go along with what kind of food of your choice? For sure, if I want to be a bit naughty, I will actually use uh, crackers or chips, you know, oh. just to uh, reward myself. Well, should we be naughty? Yes, we should. I think he really ah. saw it. <laughs> <laughs> so right. we've got some nacho chips here, a little bit of lime. But, Your dream um, come true, yeah? That nicely shaped. Have a, have a try. I'm going to try it. Okay, so uh, Kelvin, I'm going to represent you to taste this one because I wish you were here. But we will have some, you know, coming your way or even better if you could actually uh, DIY, do it at home. You know, plate it up and then send us a picture so that we can shout out to the audience and viewers right over here. So 
Bon appétit, brother. There you go. Bon appétit. Oh, wow. This was, um... Is it good? The taste that I was expecting is actually sweet. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit grainy, so it yeah. gives it a little bit of texture when you, you mm. bite into your nachos. And it's extremely fragrant. That's the soy. Oh. The soy is a little um, grainy, more right? grainy than uh, mm. chickpeas. But All it's right. interesting. You can dress it a little more. I'm oh, gonna have, I mean, you know, Rico is a huge fan of um, olive oil. Yeah. And I am a huge fan of any kind of food that tastes to, good. So try yeah. that now. Should have a little more bite, a little more zing. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Better? Oh, so fragrant. The, the olive oil, the lemon. Oh. You should try this at home, mm. really. Oh, this that's so better now. Wow. Yeah. The olive oil gave it that wholesome and the flavor. Lemon, eh? You know, Calvin, you should be excited. I'm looking forward to you trying. <laughs> this is this actually is... really <laughs> cruel, isn't it? He's like, oh my god. I like your reaction, bro. It's like, <laughs> all right, let's eat, let's eat. I'm just watching, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Calvin, we look forward to having you, you know, join us if possible after any the circuit breaker period. Yeah. But please do okay. try this at home. We want to thank you so much for joining us on the online platform. Before you sign off at this point, do you have anything you want to say? To our viewers out there, mm. anything positive when it comes to training, staying well, staying good? Yeah, hi everyone. I think uh, firstly, I would like to thank our frontliners, our health heroes, you know, for uh, fighting every day throughout this period. I think it's not, this uh, time is a hard time for everyone, but I think certainly we will go through this uh, hard time all together. Thank you. Thank you once again, Kelvin, for joining us once Thanks, again. Thank you. Was very on track cyclist. Good to see you. So thank you for joining Good us. Good to see you. Likewise, thanks right, for having bye -bye. me. Bye. See you, mate. Bye. Now, see you, mate. As uh, Kelvin is going offline, yeah. we've seen some of his training with gyms earlier on. We had a very big hearted ration who started off with some really nice campaign to bring food across to the elderly. Yeah, right? what an outstanding young man, eh? And we had one challenge, which is to make. Ice cream. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Rico knows me lah. Huh? This episode is for me. One, you were right? looking forward to this like a week ago. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna bring the oh, ice yeah. cream back out. I wanna see what you came up with. You're gonna guess which one is mine and which one is Rachel's, okay? Okay. Alright, so we, we kept it frozen so that yeah. it has a little bit more of an ice cream texture. Right, eh? Alright, um you did I mean you weren't on set when we were actually creating this. So we plated it up nicely. Nice and frozen. I was watching from afar. Back uh, yeah, you're watching from afar, yeah. but you, we didn't. We try not to let you know who's this which lah. Okay, so we have two bowls over here. Uh. The one that tastes nicer to you generally will be mine. Very, <laughs> very rustic, isn't it? Okay, so um, we're going to let you have a taste. Oh yeah, okay. And then you will tell us who is the winner okay. in the next episode. Come one oh, yeah. for each bowl. What? Oh yeah, it's gone. It's refrozen. Oh, I thought it's because it's, it looks nicer to you lah. Well, it was just closest to me. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's got some nuts on top. I like that. Good yeah. way to get some nuts and seeds in there. So this one has nuts, yeah. muesli, strawberry. So nicely. Kind of anyhow one. No, no. This is actually oh. like Little Mountains and the River Ocean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you have that flow of the landscape around the river. Huh? Oh, it tastes nice, eh? Really, yeah. yeah. You make me want to try, man. <laughs> you look excited mm. by me saying that. Mm. Yeah, so no. let's place it and then let's try the other bowl. Okay, this one's a lot bigger than this one. Mm -hmm. Did you guys follow the instructions? Uh, I, I did lah, generally. You, I mean, as much as you I like did. Mr. Oh. I, yeah, I Ray's, a, Ray's a big boy though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah He's yeah. a lot taller than you. Yes, yes, yes. He tends to be a bit more kiasu than me. Mm. <laughs> There's okay, a lot, so lot of honey on this one. Yes, I'll be honest with you. This is Ray's version. Uh, this one? Yes. Is it? Yes, yes. I mean, I tend to be the one that, that has the biggest sense. serving, lah, but now we finally met a competitor. Someone wow. who makes things that is larger than life. Ooh, I can see the honey. Oh. <laughs> it got a lot of honey on it. <laughs> I can see they all reacted it. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! It's like on my teeth going... It's just a wake-up call, right? So this is really breakfast style. We just go in and go, whoa! Whoa! It's like ice cream gal. <laughs> ice cream gal. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, we're not going to announce the winners. We're going to keep it uh, for okay. the next episode. Okay. But again, thank you viewers for joining us this time around. And of course, uh, do remember to like, comment, share, 
<laughs> share and comment. Yeah, and uh, you know, join us for more episodes to come with what you're cooking, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode as we unveil the winner yes. for the ice cream breakfast challenge. All right. Thank <music> you.